Let's talk about remote collaboration. This was Skype of 1960s. <laughs> people had to actually dial the phone, sit in front of tiny screens, and wait for other people to show up. Thank God, technology has evolved so much since. But has it really? Today, we're still stuck in these tiny rectangles, and it's hard to tell if someone's paying attention or not. Like, Cole on the left is so focused on his Facebook. <laughs> And Elliot on the bottom feels bad because he just accidentally talked over Aaron. But that happens a lot. Working in the same physical space is much more engaging. People make eye contact to persuade one another. We use gestures to draw each other's attention. We can use the table and the wall to organize all our ideas. And this is why we value coming to an office and sitting next to each other. But it often means getting stuck in a terrible traffic or having to hop on a long plane just for one meeting. There's got to be a better way to share space and work together. But computers or phones may not be the right tools. Eight years ago, I had a thought. I've always been fascinated by how architects and artists express their ideas with their hands in the 3D space, and this led me to build this 3D augmented reality desktop. Augmented reality, or AR, is a technology that superimposes 3D graphics onto the physical space, like floating holograms. And back then, AR mostly existed in the lab, and to work on AR, I had to put together some serious technologies, like this duct tape and a camera strapped onto my head. <laughs> So, fast forward. Now AR has become a practical reality. Me and my friend Anand Agarwala decided to build an AR platform called Spatial to bring this vision to reality. The vision was to allow people to share space and work together from anywhere, as if they're sitting next to each other. Let me show you how this works. Our first challenge is how to get you out of the screens and give you a virtual body in the physical space. For that, we're turning your 2D photo into a 3D avatar using a machine learning engine, and we're not trying to make the perfect copy of you, but something that's authentic to you that would look and move like you. Here's Josh, our engineer who worked from his home in Detroit, miles away from our headquarters in New York. Back in the day, when Josh needs to collaborate with someone, he had to schedule a meeting, book a meeting room, and send all the documents beforehand. But now he doesn't have to because he can sit next to us. Without leaving his home. By the way, the videos I'm showing you today are real-time footages recorded by connecting AR headset and computers. Now Josh can wear an AR headset like this Microsoft Hololens, enter Spatial, to teleport to the office. So now through AR glasses, we can meet Josh as if in real life. And Josh's gestures and eye contact are played through his avatar. All his screens can be shared into this infinite workspace. From Josh's point of view. Bree is working next to his desk in Detroit. You can even see Josh's fingers scrolling on his mouse. This is possible because we're detecting body movement from the sensors on the headset. Pointing at something together and sharing fine nuances through gestures, they really help people to get on the same page and share their feelings. And it closes the mental distance you would feel from the traditional video calls. It's super cool to virtually sit next to each other. But once you're sharing the entire virtual room to work together, there's so much more you can do. You can collaborate in very different ways. First, you can physically interact with data, like a piece of paper. So our New York team can finally place sticky notes on the wall of our San Francisco office. And using this infinite canvas, you can collect all the images from the internet and quickly fill the room with all your ideas. Then the whole team can organize the ideas together. Much more fun and interactive than collecting ideas on Google Doc or Slack, right? And when we're designing this system, one of our beliefs has always been that we shouldn't adapt to how computers operate, but computers should adapt to how we think, how humans think. Our brain is not a linear processor. We have to improvise to get to an answer. Let's say you came up with an idea during an AR brainstorming. Now you can just say a word, like sea turtles, and the word gets materialized right before your eyes. This radically shortens the gap between what you think and what people see. This playful user interface really helps people to improvise and bounce ideas off of one another, almost like playing jazz together. Great news is that this is not a proof of concept, but people are already having meetings like this today. 
engineers are planning their projects in this room filled with data and prototypes, and financial institutions are having real estate planning in this AR room. But not only do people find AR collaboration more fun or engaging, but it also helps companies to actually reduce their time and material waste. Let me show you an example. Mattel's designers started to set up digital project room instead of building physical mood boards, which they have to take down after every meeting. So now, once the designer is done with her initial design, she can upload a model and invite all the stakeholders from all around the world to try it out and leave comments and sketches, and they can even annotate directly on the model. And all these changes are being saved in this room, so anyone can revisit later. This way, what used to take many weeks of iteration and multiple factory visits can be done in just a few virtual meetings, and teams have to travel less than before. By the way, reducing business travel is not only important for saving your time or budget, it's also important for the health of our planet. Just one round trip from New York to Korea cancels out all your efforts to reduce carbon emission, like car-free commuting, going vegetarian, even using LED light bulbs all combined for one entire year. I strongly think holographic meetings can contribute to cutting down carbon emission by reducing business travel. But what's also important is to reduce carbon footprints of buildings themselves. I think holographic office might be able to fix this. But for that, we will need a solution to teleport one entire space to another beyond just teleporting individuals. Let me show you a glimpse of what it might look like. This is an early research, but through holographic capturing of a remote workspace and sending it to another, you can hear and see people joking and walking by right in your room. And this ambient awareness makes you feel like being physically present in their space. When this kind of technology evolves further, we may live in a world where physical space or distance is no longer relevant to us. For example, talents in developing countries can work anywhere in the world, including Silicon Valley, without having to pay high living costs of Bay Area. Economic and geographical divide can be reduced. Today, I talked about how augmented reality is transforming our workspace. But what it boils down to is that we connect better when we're sharing space. I showed you how reducing distance between computers and us can reduce the physical distance between people. And I hope it eventually shortens the distance between people's minds and dreams. Thank you.